This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Great, good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. My esteemed guest this afternoon is Peter Stone, CEO of Green Building Hawaii. And we're going to talk about making homes and commercial buildings like a thermos. Why would you want to make anything a structure like a thermos? Think about it. When you put hot coffee or whatever into a thermos or iced tea, you want it to stay hot or stay cool. When you cool down a building in Hawaii, you would like it to stay cool instead of blasting cold air in all the time. That's very uncomfortable. It's very noisy and it's going to cost you a heck of a lot of money. And from my standpoint as a state of energy office official, you are not getting us to 100% clean energy this way. And while I remember, let me do a disclaimer. Peter and I are going to be talking a lot of individual products, and we do not, I do not, and Think Tech Hawaii does not in any way, shape, or form endorse these products. This is a technical presentation. So all of that said, welcome, Peter. So Thanks, glad Howard. to have you here. Glad to be here. And One quick correction, um, mm -hmm. not CEO, I'm COO, Chief oh. Operations Officer. Oh my <laughs> goodness gracious, Otherwise, sakes alive. my esteemed partner John will be very <laughs> upset. Yeah, okay. Okay. So Peter, why don't we, oh, let me start with a little background here. This beloved book is the 2015 International Energy Conservation Code, and the state of Hawaii has adopted it now. Governor Ige signed it into law a few months ago, and any state government project, including public schools, must comply with that new code. And then the counties are not far behind. They will be adopting it in the next few months. And one provision in here that is not in the previous code that was on the books is the need for tight buildings. When you air condition a building, be it commercial or residential, we want it designed so that the cold air stays in there instead of escaping all over the place. And if you don't do that, your energy loss, I believe, Peter, can be as high as 10, 15 percent of the air conditioning energy. Yep, that's yep, correct. Yep. So why don't we, do you have any introductory remarks or should we launch right into the first uh, I slide? I yeah. have a couple brief introductory okay, remarks. Sure. Um, what Howard is referring to with the new code is uh, there are a lot of provisions in it and it is, as you can see, a fairly thick book. Um, but what we are attempting to do is sort of narrow in on this one section that seems to have gotten many people mm -hmm. worried or concerned, and maybe for a just cause. And I wanted to try to if, dive into the weeds a little bit, if you would allow me, to show what I have learned over the last couple of years doing this work out in the field where, where the air leaks out of buildings. And I'm particularly talking about residential, which is my... Uh, most of my experience, but the same does apply for a commercial building or any building that's put together in a certain way. So we're basically talking about chapter four, the residential chapter, mm -hmm. and this mandatory requirement of um, air leakage is represented in air changes per hour mm -hmm. and at a specific pressure. Why, why don't you briefly explain air changes per hour? What, what does that mean? So if you think of a space, a cube, um, how many times is the air inside that cube, the volume of air, replaced over an hour? Mm -hmm. So if it's three, is it five, is it seven? And all buildings are going to have that naturally by just small leakage points that's going to occur throughout. And you've got pressures by wind and trade winds uh, blowing on them. It's going to force air in and out through those little holes. So we're trying to reduce that number. Mm -hmm. This might not be a a fair question, but 
What if you blow up a balloon and then exhaust the balloon? How many air changes have you had? <laughs> Is that 100 air changes per whatever time? Well, it's a hundred percent air change. Mm -hmm. It'd be one air change, though. Uh, uh, okay, okay. An air change is just the whole volume mm -hmm. changed out. Mm -hmm. Is is replaced by you know like breathing in and out. That's an air yeah. change. Okay, okay. So why don't we go to our first slide and sure. we can launch right in. We've got quite a few. So. <laughs> well, this was just to introduce mm -hmm. you know the section of the code that we're talking about, and there you have our homes must be tested and verified as having five. ACH is air changes per hour when tested at a pressure differential of 0.2 inches of water or 50 pascal, depending on mm -hmm. whether you're an engineer or a rater like I am. And we, we're not going to go into no. <laughs> the we won't go into all of that. Scales, yeah. But the, the little graphic there will talk. We'll show you. What we're talking about. We're we're finding what's called the envelope. So just like when you mail a letter and you got to put something in an envelope and you seal it up. We are trying to seal the envelope of the house, so any part that is a barrier between the interior of the house that is air conditioned and the outside. And it seems to go what it's defined by the green line. What's happening up on the second floor there? That is not the attic. That that is actual living space up there. Well, they're calling it an attic in this graphic, mm -hmm. and they're saying that that is a space that, for whatever reason, in this particular house. Is it designed as storage or it could be whatever? It is not necessarily air conditioned. It's not part of the house. It might be, it might be a balcony there. I can't quite tell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But normally an attic would not be, uh, I mean, you'd, you'd have ceiling between the living space and the attic. Well, I'm glad you asked that. Yeah. Um, we'll get to a slide where I will okay. differentiate that a little bit. If we can move to the yeah. next one. Um, I wanted to just briefly talk about how do we measure these numbers that we're talking about. And so, we put this big red door in the main entrance to the house and use that big fan and something called a manometer, which is just nothing more than a pressure differential measurement device. And we turn the fan on and get that pressure to a difference of 0.1 water, inches of water or 50 Pascal, depending on how you look at things. So that's just to show you what it looks like. Very. Um, kind of techy, but it's, it's really just inducing a pressure. And some people might say, well, that's not really real life, is it? Because you're putting this false pressure on things, you're making things happen. But um, if you think about our trade winds, roughly at 15 to 20 miles an hour most of the year, that is a pretty fair equivalent to the kinds of pressures that are induced upon a normal house in everyday Eva Beach or wherever it might be. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we can move to the next slide, uh, we'll get to your question on that condition yeah, space yeah, here in we that go. Yeah. attic. Um, now I'm talking specifically here about residences and homes. Uh, there are two ways to do it that are very common these days. On the left, you'll see a, what's called a seal attic. So the insulation is stuck up underneath the roof at the rafters either by tying it in with twine, like a bat insulation, or blowing spray foam in there. So now your envelope is extended to the very top there, so that is going to be part of the volume that you're measuring for the air changes that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Versus the one on the right, where we have a vented attic, so you have open eaves there on the sides, allowing the air to blow up in there, mm -hmm. and then if we're lucky, we have also designed a ridge vent or a place on the top where air can escape. And that, that is in the code, by the way. It's not what I see every day out there, but it's mm -hmm. in the code. Mm -hmm. And why in the world would you want to condition an attic? Well, there are many reasons. Um, one is if you have air conditioning, most people will put the equipment for the air conditioner mm -hmm. uh, up in the attic. And so you wonder, well, it's just equipment. Why do you want to keep that cool? But if you think about it, the cooler that equipment is kept, um, number one, the longer it will last, and number two, the amount of cooling that it needs to do because it isn't gaining heat by sitting in this 120 degree attic and then trying to make air coming back from the house cool again um, by having to 
cool kind of its space around it, I guess, is the best mm -hmm. way to say it. Yeah, I've seen poorly insulated attics get up to 140 degrees. Uh-huh. That's a heck of a... I have been in a few of them, and they yeah, are yeah. really hot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so besides putting insulation there, as you well know, there are products on their market with cool roofs and reflective capabilities to help um, to bring that, that temperature down in there. Mm -hmm. So that's the main reason. And, and the reason that I have the circles on the edges there, one of them got offset a little bit, is to demonstrate these are areas of concern when trying to seal the house up. Those are the areas that I run into the most, or most of the issues occur, mm -hmm. which we can talk about. Okay, let's move on to the next slide then. Yeah, so now we're going to get into the weeds, and I, I apologize to people that may not be as familiar, but if the, the biggest issue that I've seen, if, if you had a sealed attic, so the one where the insulation is at the top there, would be right underneath those beams, at every point where those red arrows are, we have uh, two bys stacked on it. Looks like two by sixes are stacked on top of each other. If those are just left as is, which I have seen in a few projects, that entire line there is going to leak air. You know, because remember, I'm I'm pulling air in to test do my test for that whole space up there because it is a quote unquote sealed attic. So if we don't use some product in some way to seal that space between there, that's an issue. And then on the graphic on the lower right, each time those rafters are penetrating from the gable end, which is that triangle section there, out into the overhang space, each one of those little spaces there is also a potential point for air to come in. And it seems really small. You think, well, geez, that's not very big. What's the problem there? Um, it is a problem. It doesn't meet the requirement if I'm testing that that you have to think about that runs the entire length of that beam there and each one of those penetrations they all add up basically is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yep, makes makes sense. So that is that is one one big area that is the issue. My my point in all of this is just to demonstrate some areas, you know, whether or not they should be sealed is a whole another discussion and whether people are gonna do it. But if they want to attempt a sealed attic these are the areas that I have seen in my experience that are, um, need to be paid attention to. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, let, mm -hmm. let's move on to the next slide then. Yep. Ooh. So these are some super detailed shots of just the same idea where it looks like from the outside, hey, everything's all nice and sealed up, but when I get in there and I'm in that attic space, uh, if I can see daylight through there, we have too much air coming in. Mm -hmm. So we would need to take some measure to seal that, and that comes in a later slide, what are, the, what are the solutions to this? But these are some of the issues in places where air would be coming in. Mm -hmm. And the one on the right are the two by fours are stacked. This is from an actual project that I worked on, and they're stacked on the short side to provide the height needed, and, and nobody just thought they had it sealed all the way up to that soffit, but not beyond. So the next slide, if we can put that up, that's the outside of basically the same house that we just looked at. And they had Tyvek very well done. They had sheathing on the outside all the way up to that lower spot, but the material that was covering that space, which we'll, which we'll show you in a minute, wasn't airtight. So all of the air that was coming in was coming in up through that eave and then through those two by fours and every single rafter um, that penetrates through there was all leaking in air. Mm -hmm. So the next yeah. slide, is the finished product. And it looks like it might be all sealed up, but that is just a vinyl mm -hmm. uh, covering there with all kinds of holes in it. It is not an air barrier by any means. So each time those little Vs happen, that's just air going in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's another, uh, that's just, that's a very, those are three sh photos of a very detailed shot of what, what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one very common area. Okay, then another one, now we're going to switch gears, and we're talking about a vented attic. So this is again, now our insulation would be down at the ceiling level, so down laying on top of the drywall uh, that's right above the living space. Mm -hmm. And so the attic would have its vented and everything else. But now we need to be concerned about each one of the wires that comes up through what's called the top plate, which doesn't look like a plate, but it's a piece of wood. 
that's the top piece of wood that's the top framing member for the wall. Um, that now is going to be a potential area for air to come into the wall system and then potentially out anywhere in the house. Um, and then the lower right, you can see there's a plumbing vent that mm -hmm. needs to be sealed up. And so what you'll see in here, they've got foam, which is a very common cans of spray foam that you use. And you seal up each one of these uh, edges along there to, to keep the air from entering the hot attic space down into the home, therefore making the air conditioner work harder, cost you more money, and... Yeah. And, and it, it, it decreases the comfort, too. No, nobody wants to be blasted with a whole bunch of uh, cold exactly. air all the time. Yes, yeah. it does. And on that cheery note, we need to take a break. Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, back in a moment. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps him from drinking too much so he can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. My esteemed guest is Peter Stone, COO of Green Building Hawaii. And he is one of the key people who keeps homes energy efficient and comfortable, and I might add, healthy. Because what you, even if you're sealing up a building, you want an adequate amount of fresh air coming in. That's and I, I think all of us who've been in airplanes and uh, gotten sick, are thinking of all those hundreds of people in that little tube and somebody's coughing and sneezing somewhere, the air's getting, that, those germs are getting recycled to us. Hopefully filtered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the same type of thing, there's a whole bunch of uh, considerations for maintaining good, healthy indoor air in addition to comfort and in addition to uh, yes, energy absolutely. efficiency. So why don't we take off where we left off and look at the next slide here. Okay. Um, so again, here we're talking about a vented attic and another um, area that has been of concern more, not so much in the recent uh, past, but more in the distant past, we had, uh, it was very common with these, the recessed can lights, they're very popular, people like to put them all over their ceiling and light their home up and, and they're, they're nice, they look great. Uh, they also unfortunately are a huge source of um, air leakage and heat uh, gain into uh, space, not only because the lights used to be very warm, um, but now gone mostly to LED, uh, has helped not only keep the coolness of the light down, but also LEDs tend to be more sealed. Uh, but these are older looking can lights that we're seeing here. And so just to mention that you can see on the, the picture on the left is an infrared camera shot. And every single light um, is showing very warm compared to the rest of the ceiling. And that's where all those pieces of uh, all those holes are really producing some extra heat in the house again that's going to the same old thing it's going to make the air conditioner work harder has more air to cool off now you're referring to 78.3 is that the ambient temperature in the no that's home? generally reading if you see where the pointer is on that image mm -hmm. that that is you know give or take a few it's not an exact number is the temperature basically of the ceiling now if i were yeah. to move that 
over to underneath that light where it's orange, it would probably jump up to, oh, say, you know, 92, 93, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. And the, just to explain, the purple is the, the deep purple or bluish is the coolest area, and then the yes. pink is a little warmer, bit warmer. Yeah. Getting to the oranges and the yellows, you get hotter. Now, it kind of looks like it's on fire, and it's, mm -hmm. it's a little misleading, mm -hmm. but it's very pretty, these pictures. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, running at 100 degrees. It's just showing you that there's a big temperature difference there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. could be three or four degrees. Yeah. So that's just another area to think about with can lights. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the last area for air leakage in buildings, you know, that I've run into is what's called a frame floor. So what I'm talking about here is that anything that juts out, like you see in these pictures, even though it's that very small one, juts out over what we call unconditioned area, ambient space. If we don't take pains to seal that area up, that is going to be another area where warm air will enter basically the wall system and the floor system and then seep up into through heat transfer through the flooring into the space. So what, what, that's called a frame floor? It's called a frame floor well, in the industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's a num number of names for it, but generally anything that sticks out, so that's like the second floor, there's a little section that sticks out over below. Like it could even be over a, a balcony down below, for example. That's very common here. Or a covered lanai, for example. Mm -hmm. So those need to be um, very carefully looked at. When it's a covered on eye, it's a little bit, usually it's, it's more sealed, but something like this is often overlooked by people. It's very small, so people just kind of, in this case, they were going to throw uh, the same material they put on the soffit up top on this one, and I had to tell them that wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. So we had to put in some different material there, some air barrier material. Interesting. So, yep, next slide. So we talk about all these problems. What about solutions? Um, really, for most applications, there's just a couple of solutions. You know, obviously there's caulking for small areas, um, and this in this picture on the left, it's basically fire caulk, and it's a fine product. And what's nice about it is it meets fire code. And the fire code officials are often looking for the same things that I am. Mm -hmm. So we're in consort in most areas. The one area that I caution with fire caulk is that the, the product itself is designed that when heat hits it or a fire hits it, that, will, that whole thing will actually expand huge. It'll just get big mm. and block that hole, that penetration there, which is great for their purposes, but not so much for mine. So what, what happens is it tends to be put on in a very haphazard manner. Um, because the installers know very well what it's supposed to do for the fire, and they're not worried if it's a little gap in there, it's going to get filled if that ever fire ever happens. Mm -hmm. However, when I come in and test, hopefully there's no fire going on. <laughs> so um, I need that to be completely sealed, and it isn't going to compromise the product if it's overdone, um, but it needs to be sealed up very strongly. With, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't just put it in little, and leave little gaps, because that'll be a problem. Mm -hmm. On the right, we see a typical, typical spray foam application. And spray foam is great because it can be an insulator as well as an air sealer, assuming it is um, put on in the right thickness and it's the right type. Now that's that gray, gray rough material we're seeing? Yeah, it's kind yeah. of a yellowish. But yes, mm -hmm. it's that one at the very bottom there, kind of um, below the silvery uh, 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 radiant uh, barrier. Okay, okay, yeah. So that's sealing up that, that top area there where the air tends to come out in a in a supposedly sealed attic, you need to have that area sealed up. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the air sealing of the homes. Um, yeah. And just to get back to your point briefly on, on the ventilation, which is a whole other show and a whole other concept, yeah. Yeah. Um, because everyone's laughing at me saying, well, you want me to seal up this home and then you want me to ventilate it? And I'm mm -hmm. telling them, yes, I do, because mm -hmm. if you just are letting the air come in through these any old which way, what kind of air is that? Not very good air. Mm -hmm. Not very clean air. It's coming in through an attic with a bunch of junk in it and through wall spaces with everything else in it. So um, the other part of the new code that is mandatory in certain cases, and we won't go into the details and when it is, but 
should duct testing be required, um, this is the equipment we use. And we take a fan and we hook it up to the return system and we cover every register in the house. And then we blow uh, half the amount in. And that's that amount, that amount of pressure that we're putting in there is about what most systems are designed to run at, about 0 0.1, a little bit less, 0 0.7 inches of water column. Now, uh, the outlet that you're referring to is that little vented thing that we see in the ceilings. Right, so that's yeah. what blows the cool air in mm -hmm. to the space. And when we're testing the system for leakage, well, obviously we want that leak, that's a good leak. So we're testing the system, we've got to cover that up. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of those in the house and we've got to cover them all up. Hmm. Okay. And oh, yeah, yeah. Let, let me just say that uh, in the meetings I have, leaky ducts are come up time and time and time again. Yes. Yeah. And I have um, run into many people are under the impression that well, I've got flexible duct systems. So the flexible mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. ones you see all over the place, yeah. and they and, and they there, turn. therefore there's no leak. therefore there's no leakage. Yeah. And I beg to differ, because any time that that Sure, along those duct runs, there probably isn't much, but every time it turns into, it changes and it's going to blow it into the space. So what we're looking at here is from the attic above, mm -hmm. that is the connection of the duct system to that register or that, that whatever you call it, that space where it blows the cool air into the mm -hmm. space. And in this particular case, when I had done my inspection, it turns out that the person who was putting the register on, putting the grill onto the inside had pushed it up so hard that it had mm -hmm. broken the seal that they had carefully made on the other side and didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's something that happens. And yep. so, you know, it's all about quality control, really. Yeah. Okay, we've got about one minute left. So how about the next slide? Sure, next slide. So Ooh. this is just yeah. another place where transitions happen and leakage can occur. It's pretty self-explanatory there, not much to really talk mm -hmm. about. We can, we can blow right through that one. Yeah. But uh, that's where transitions from flexible to some box of some kind happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear about massive, massive uh, weight waste of, of cold air that way. Right, because you're, you're blowing all that cool air and it's just going into an attic mm -hmm. usually. Yep. And one more, and that's whoa, me. Oh, there, there we go. There, there's your contact information, Peter. Mm -hmm. And in the very brief time we had, you, you mentioned people are concerned about this, and I am the energy code manager and the energy efficiency manager, and I am getting what's called pushback from builders. This yes. is going to add to the cost. This is going to add to the cost. And I say, yes, and it's going to save energy. Right. So we have this uh, constant uh, push back and forth, back and forth. Yes, I'm and well aware. <laughs> yes, it happens all and, the time. And yeah. I know that that's the case. And I mm -hmm. usually just have to say that if, if we are trying to achieve a certain goal here, there will be some costs involved. But I think sometimes they get a little bit scared by the extra mm -hmm. costs once once uh, installers and, and the trades are brought up to speed on mm -hmm, how it's done and mm -hmm. what's done, yeah, there will be more costs, but it won't be as much as they yeah. initially think. Okay. Okay. And on that very, very cheery note, <laughs> it's time to bid us fond farewell. Peter Stone, COO, Green Building, Hawaii. Thank you so much for Thanks being for with us, me, Peter. Howard. Appreciate it. Howard Wig, Code Green. Think Tech Hawaii, see you next time.